Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronic, your host here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be talking about how to level up fast, get lots of very fast power very quickly and efficiently in Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. More specifically, I'm going to be talking about the basic and advanced strategies from equalizing to level spiking. I'm going to be showing you a full list of all of the possible powerful gears that I have seen in the game to this date, as well as the fact that we'll be updating it when I find more or find new information, and lastly, just tips and tricks extra little bits of information to get every little particle of power you can as efficiently and effectively as possible. To be honest, I'd be very surprised if any person watching this video knew 100% of the information that's going to be on this doc. So make sure you check it out. There's probably going to be something that you may not have thought about. And of course, stay tuned to the very end because I'll be giving you a link to this Google Doc to get this Word document that you can download for yourself to keep as your holy Bible while leveling up through Destiny with the full list of all the powerful gear and all the tips and tricks that you may ever want to know about this game. And it is fully color-coded, has legends, lots of really cool stuff on it. And of course, if you have see my channel very often, you are new to Destiny 2 or just my channel in general, it is about time you learn that I love cute animals. And I like putting cute animals near the beginnings of a lot of my videos. So please sit back, enjoy. And lastly, before I get started, I could not be doing this without sponsors like Astro and Control Freaks. So please check them out in the description down below for 5% off of anything from Astro, 10% off anything from Control Freaks. Follow the links or use the discount code found in the description down below. They're really good stuff. Let me tell you, I use them literally every single day. Check them out. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, this video will be split into three main sections. First section is going to be talking about some basic strategy, basic understanding of the power levels, what's the soft cap, what's the medium cap, and what's the hard cap, and what's the pinnacle cap. There's lots of little bits of information you may want to know. Second section is going to be all the powerful gear locations, all the things that I could find, all the tiers that are associated with them in a beautiful format. And then lastly, it's going to be a section on the extra little bit bits of tips and tricks where you can eke out every little particle of power along the way and just general information you may not know about as well as a lot of stuff has changed from the last season. So let's go ahead and get started with some basic strategy. First and foremost, everybody starts at 750 power no matter what. Whether you have the DLCs, whether you're part of New Light, whether you have Shadowkeep, you start at 750 and everything you possibly have starts at 750. Next up, let's talk about the caps. From power 750 to 900 power, literally any drop that you get from blue to pinnacle will help your power level and you'll be able to get up there pretty quickly. From power levels 900 to 950, you have to get tier one, tier two, tier three, and pinnacle power drops uh, to be able to level up between those levels. Between power levels 950 and 960, only the pinnacle powerful rewards will help you. And by pinnacle, I mean the rewards that are the end game activities. So stuff like the raids, 100k nightfalls, probably the master hunts in the future, all this stuff will be labeled as pinnacle drop. And then lastly, the only way to get past 960 is getting more power with the seasonal artifact. Basically uses experience points to give bonus power indefinitely uh, this thing is gained at seasonal rank 7 and resets every single season. So basically, grind out extra experience into power that you can get all the way up into the higher powers. And this is how we will be able to do the 980 Nightfalls because that is still a significant power increase. An important note to new people who are just coming into Destiny 2 or may have forgotten, you want to make sure you hit your soft cap before you get any new powerful gear. So when you first start the game out, the soft cap is around 900. All of the blues and legendaries will cap out at around that amount and you have to start getting powerful gear. Now, once you get to your second character, that new soft cap may be around 910 or wherever your power level ended up on your first character. So you want to get all of that gear equalized to around that new soft cap before you get new powerful gear. This makes sure that you don't waste any powerful gear in areas that you could have done with just random world legendary. Next up, I wanted to talk about something that's really, really important to do along the way if you want to maximize your potential, and it's called level spiking. Now, I didn't conceive of this idea by myself. This something that a lot of people do in the community, but it is very important if you want to eke out every little particle of power that you can along the way. Now, please try to stay with me because it's kind of difficult to explain what's going on with this. Let me give you an example. Let's say most of your gear is around 920. Then you get three different powerful drops. Let's say all of them drop at 925. Each one of these gear items are much higher than the other gear items at 920, and we call those gear spikes. If you were to get a fourth powerful gear, that might land on the same slot as one of the other really powerful ones at 925 and be wasted on those slots. So in between getting spikes of gear, so every time you get like two or three powerful gear, you're going to want to equalize your 
gear across the board. And with the changes to power in this DLC, any rare item or legendary that you can get from Zavala or randomly in the world will drop about on level anywhere from negative two to zero power levels below your average amount of power. So what you want to do is basically equalize by spamming out those items. Go to Zavala, go to Shax, go to Gunsmith, spam out some tokens or Gunsmith materials and try to equalize your gear so that most of the gear is around uh, 923, 924, uh, anywhere in between so those spikes are less noticeable and any new powerful drop will not be wasted and also get the additional benefit of having the new average be higher than it was before. Like I said, it sounds kind of complicated. The general idea is you want to get a couple of different powerful rewards then equalize with the stuff that are less powerful and just rinse and repeat this process. As long as you're doing that, you don't need to worry about the little bits and pieces in between. Now there's a lot of other things you can know about to eke out little bits and pieces, but we're gonna be covering that in the notes and tips and tricks section. Let's go ahead and move on to the powerful reward location. Now throughout all of my research and play time, I was able to track down 44 unique powerful rewards that you can get per week on each one of the characters and five non-repeatable powerful ones. Now obviously it says 44 plus, that's because some of them are infinite, like for example, the exotic engrams or uh, major infamy rank ups. These things can be done infinitely, but there are 44 unique ones that you can get every week per character. And before I get into the powerfuls, I just wanted to mention very briefly the non-powerful rewards, which you can see on screen now. This is not all of them, by the way. There's a lot more that I couldn't possibly track from previous DLCs, all the previous activities. All of these things basically drop on level. These are just the ones, the common ones, that I would expect you to be curious about. And like I was mentioning before with equalizing and getting power spikes and all that stuff, you want to use these on level rewards to be able to equalize your gear. Moving on, let's go ahead and talk about the powerful starting up with the Vanguard. In the Vanguard, there are four plus drops. First of all, the strike playlist for three strikes. Uh, next up for the Nightfall, you need to get five points. Harder difficulties will give you more points. So doing higher difficulties, you can do it faster. Also a Nightfall with 100k points will be able to get you a pinnacle reward. And as far as I understand it, you have to do the ordeal at 950 power or higher or alternatively, you're gonna have to amp up the maximum amount of modifiers in a pretty high handicap in the regular Nightfalls to be able to get 100k. It's not as easy as it was before. And lastly, Zavala's weekly challenge to do eight Vanguard bounties. Next up for Crucible, we have five plus drops. We have the Core Crucible, four matches in Core Crucible and four matches in Rotator Crucible. When you hover over them in the director, it'll say Core or Rotator. We also have the Shaq's weekly challenge for the eight Crucible bounties. And then lastly, we have the Major Glory and Valor rank ups, which can be completed infinitely in every single week. However, obviously it does take a lot of time investment to be able to rank these up. Uh, if you are looking to level up these things the fastest, I recommend going for the glory playlist because you get glory and Valor at the same time, you get double rewards. It's really great early on. Next up for the Infamy playlist, you have three plus drops. Doing three matches of either Gambit or Gambit Prime can be a mix of both of them. Get you a tier two drop. One mention I would say about this is that this may not be always a tier two drop. It may be rotating among the three different playlists, uh, but right now it is a tier two. Next up for the Drifter weekly challenge for the eight Gambit bounties. And then lastly, just like in Crucible, an infinite amount of major Infamy rank ups will be obtainable through the Infamy playlist. Next up for the Tower, we have a 11 drops. The first three items are going to be the Zavala, Shax, and Drifter weekly challenges. There are a couple of repeats that are marked by the double star. I did want to place them in multiple categories just so you guys could have them. Uh, moving on from there, we have the Gunsmith Weekly Challenge, very similar to the Crucible, the Vanguard, and the Drifter Challenge, just eight bounties from the Gunsmith. After that, Hawthorne's got two different kinds of challenges. First of all, uh, her Vendor Challenge, the Clan Rewards, getting 5,000 XP for the Clan, and then secondly, the Hawthorne Clan Engrams, which uh, if you do Crucible, Strikes, Raids with your Clan Mates, you'll be able to get more Clan Engrams like that. After that, Ikora has two things. First of all, she has a bounty for the Vex Offensive. This is the one that you do to get started with the Vex offensive. This one may not be repeatable, but I'm going to include it anyways. And then lastly, for Icar, we have the weekly challenge, which is after you do the Vex offensive, it'll pop up and it'll say just getting Vex kills, getting parts from them, and she'll build like a portal or something with it. I don't know what she does with those parts. Moving on to the moon, we have five plus drops. First of all, the nightmare hunts, just do three hunts for a tier one. After that, the bounty from Eris is the weekly replayable mission. So get the bounty, replay the mission, and then claim the bounty for the power. After that, Eris's vendor challenge, the weekly challenge for her. 
And on the map in Moon, we have the Vex Offensive, which is just killing Vex in the Vex Offensive, which is on the Director. And then lastly, something that I'm not sure is really true, but it kind of appears true. If you kill any Vex Offensive Overlords that are in the Patrol area, those will drop powerful gear. So as you kill Gate Lords from the Warp Gates, eventually you'll find a Hydra with Yellow Health called an Overlord and he drops a powerful gear. And two times in a row, he dropped powerful gear for my Warlock. So my assumption is that there's an infinite amount from him, but I don't feel like that's true because that can't be right. Next up for the raid, we have four drops. The Garden of Salvation has four powerful drops and two standard chests, and these will be pinnacle drops for the entire raid. Next up for the miscellaneous section, we have 16 plus drops. The flashpoint is the first item. After that, 14 prime engrams, because you can get two per day. After that, exotic engrams can drop pretty much infinitely, but you'll probably get around like three per week if you're, pre if you're playing pretty hard. And the last little bit there is gonna be Zer Bounty. I'm not sure if it's powerful. It's probably not powerful, but uh, I would love to know more information about that. And then lastly, the non-repeatable extra powerful weapons, the new ritual weapons, which I'm assuming are gonna be powerful, but I don't know how powerful, what tier they are. Maybe they're gonna be pinnacle tier. I don't know what they are. I literally haven't gotten them. I don't know anybody who has. If you have, let me know how many power levels above your average it was. And then obviously the new exotic quests, Deathbringer and Divinity, are gonna be your tier two powerful. And that's pretty much it for the powerful locations of all the powerful engrams that I could have figured out by this point. Moving on, let's go and talk about the notes and tips and tricks, some things that have changed from last season uh, as far as getting power goes that are quite important to know, as well as some new stuff and extra little tidbits of information that you may not know about. So something that has changed from last season is that the difference in power level from the activities recommended level no longer changes the benefit of the powerful drop. It used to be if you were really far below the activity, you'd get a really, really good drop, and if you were really high above it, you'd get a very poor drop. In this season, that is no longer the case. Another really important thing is that you do not need to have your highest level guns and armor equipped to get your new drops to be higher level. You can literally have them anywhere on your account. I started my third character, my Hunter. I did not transfer over any of the guns and armor, and the first drop I got was 854, and my character was only 750. It used to be that you had to have it in your inventory, but apparently you can literally have it anywhere on your account and still get the benefits. A fun little tip is I would highly recommend you buy the Xur's armors when he's available to give your next character a really high armor power boost. So for example, I got to the Xur with my Warlock. I was around 920 base level, and all of the items were 920, I could pick up a hunter armor that was 920, transfer it over to my hunter, and he would not only have the power advantage of wearing it, he would also have a boost in his average power level to be able to get more gear quicker than before. And if you did not know, you can actually use three characters to help subsequent characters power grind by giving them powered up guns, thus giving them an advantage in starting power levels. So you get to 910 on your first character, all of those guns will then affect your second character's level, get you up faster, and also be able to equalize around 910 before even getting powerful gear. So using three different characters, you can actually get a higher maximum level by the end of the week if you're absolutely grinding all of them out fully. Next up for kind of a frequently asked question, a very common misnomer is that the Gate Lord's Eye power bonus does not affect the drops you get, only the power of your character. And then lastly, a very big important note as far as vendors go, all of the vendors' engram power can be viewed before claiming that engram. All of the vendors' engrams change power range daily, uh, for example, Zavala will give you an engram that's negative one power uh, from your average gear power one day, and then the next day it'll be negative two, uh, and it will go anywhere between negative two and zero from your base power level. And honestly, what I do every single day is I just go to each one of the vendors. I already have an engram sitting there from giving them tokens, and I just check to see who is currently offering the best power bonuses for that day, and then I use that guy to equalize my gear. And the last little note I wanted to mention is that you should be saving up a lot of your seasonal rank items. So the gun, armor, exotic engram, and legendary engram rewards can be saved until you need to equalize. For example, if your leg armor is low, then claim one of the seasonal leg armor rewards and that will fill in your leg armor. And this is true for the guns they have available, uh, for all of the armor pieces, which there are an abundance of, as well as just the engrams. If you notice that a lot of gear stuff is low, claim one of the engrams, you may actually get a benefit from it. And this is separate for each one of the characters, so they all have their own separate set of rewards that they can use to equalize. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the end of the video. I know this video has been about 50 minutes. I apologize uh, that it's that long, but I, hopefully you did learn something and it is a lot of information to take in. 
Uh, if you wanted to get access to the Word document that I was mentioning throughout the video, uh, head into the description down below and go head over to my Discord. In the Discord channel, I actually have a lot of things going on. If you wanted to chat or hang out, that's a great place to do it. But in the Discord channel, there's a channel called hashtag YouTube Twitch. Go to around when this video is released and there will be a link to the Word document there. Now this Word document, I'll try to update regularly as I find new information, at least for the first few weeks, you'll be able to see a last edited at the top of the document. But that's it, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. My name's Anaya Chronic, and I will see you guys on the next one.